to my next video. Today I'm going to show you how you can make your own DIY herbal shampoo. This shampoo is amazing for hair growth, really great for strengthening the hair, especially if you have damaged hair or if you would like to grow out your hair like I am. So I would highly recommend this shampoo if you are looking for a no poo option in your hair care routine. So I hope you guys will enjoy this video. Let's get started. You'll need either a crock pot or a pan over the stove. I just use a crock pot because I find it easier, but this shampoo can be made in a pot over the stove as well. You'll also need a tablespoon for measuring. So the first ingredient that I like to use in my herbal shampoo is shikakai powder. Now shikakai powder is very famous in India, used for centuries in hair care and especially made for shampoo. According to stylecraze.com, shikakai powder has many different benefits for your scalp and your hair health. It's a wonderful natural cleanser for the hair. Shikakai has a low pH and it's very mild which is great for anybody with any scalp problems or a sensitive scalp. Also, it does not leave your scalp extremely dry and irritated. It also works as a natural detangler, so you may not have to use any conditioner after using shikakai powder. It's high in vitamin C and D, so it nourishes your scalp. Shikakai powder can help to fight dandruff, and dandruff is something you really want to avoid and get rid of since dandruff can contribute to temporary hair loss. The next ingredient is Retha, also known as soap nuts. According to wildturmeric.net, Aretha is an amazing hair cleanser. It prevents hair fall, dandruff, plus it can promote hair growth. According to tipsandbeauty.com, Aretha, as it's known in India, or soap nuts, is a popular shampoo alternative. It's antibacterial, antifungal, which makes it very desirable to add into a homemade shampoo. It naturally and mildly cleans the scalp and hair. It also can act as a mild conditioner. According to tipsandbeauty.com, Rita or soap nuts can make hair feel thicker and bouncier, plus add luster and shine to the hair. Plus it can help with dandruff and hair fall, which is really beneficial if you're trying to grow out your hair. The next ingredient is amla powder, also known as Indian gooseberry. Amla or Indian gooseberry has phytonutrients, minerals in it that can help to strengthen the hair follicles, increase scalp circulation, and stimulate new growth. Also, amla powder has twice the vitamin C as acai berry, which is very high in vitamin C in itself. The vitamin C can help to stimulate the hair growth and increase circulation on your scalp. It's also antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, and it has astringent properties that can soothe and inflame scalp, plus prevent dandruff. I've also noticed that amla has a very cooling effect to the hair and the scalp. The cooling effect is very relaxing. Amla powder is one of the oldest ways to condition your hair and it's been used for centuries by women in India. It also nourishes and conditions the scalp and hair, plus can add shine and luster. According to stylesatlife.com, amla or gooseberry is a magical Indian fruit, incredibly high in antioxidants, vitamin C, and it's been used since ancient times to increase the health of your hair. According to stylesatlife.com, if you use amla in your hair, it can stimulate hair growth, strengthen the hair follicles, plus prevent dandruff and split ends. So those are the three main ingredients in my homemade shampoo. These next ingredients are just ones that I add for extra benefits, are optional, and you do not have to add these. These next ingredients are very nourishing for the scalp especially, which is really great if you're looking to grow your hair like I am. So the first optional ingredient is fenugreek powder, also known as methi in India. According to stylecraze.com, fenugreek powder is very beneficial for the scalp, especially in preventing dandruff. It's also a natural treatment for hair fall. It can also strengthen the hair. Methi is high in proteins for your hair, so it can actually benefit someone who has maybe some balding on their hair, or a little bald spot. This spice has a natural conditioner property. I think it's pronounced lecithin, but I will leave the spelling right here for you. It can condition the hair and add some shine. This is a powder that can help you with dryness, scalp issues, plus it can help to repair damaged hair. According to beautyhealthtips.com, the iron and potassium are very beneficial for the scalp especially to promote hair growth and scalp health. The next ingredient that is beneficial but completely optional is neem. Now neem is an incredibly beneficial plant 
The entire tree has been used since ancient times, including the bark, you can make it into an oil, the leaves themselves, everything about this wonderful, amazing, incredible plant can benefit your skin and your hair. According to StyleCraze.com, neem, also known as Maragosa, or Indian lilac has been used in Ayurveda since ancient times. It's highly antibacterial, antifungal, also antiparasitic, anti-inflammatory. It's an incredibly strong plant. The anti-inflammatory properties in neem can help to prevent scalp issues, dandruff. So those two ingredients are optional. You don't have to add them, but I would recommend them if you're not allergic to them. Always, always do a patch test, maybe behind your ear or on your wrist for any of my DIYs that I make. I've been using this shampoo for a few months now and I really like it. I'm filling up this liter bottle I got at the dollar store with water. It's perfect for controlling the amount of shampoo that comes out when I'm pouring it over my head in the shower. Then I'm just pouring it all into the crock pot. I just use a crock pot because it's easier for me. But you can also make this shampoo on a stove in a pan. Then stir it well so that all the powders are mixed in the water thoroughly. These bubbles come from the shikakai powder and soap nut powder, which are both very high in saponins, which will clean the hair. Now I'm putting the lid on and leaving it on high for at least 4 hours, but I usually leave it for 6 to get all of the powder benefits into the water. Optional, you can also add a bit of rice if you have damaged hair. I just added a few. I like to turn off the slow cooker once it's done and let it cool for 1 hour before I do anything with it. Here are some of the tools you might need for sifting the shampoo. You'll need knee-high pantyhose and the bottle again. I stretch the pantyhose over the bottle's opening. Then just pour the liquid carefully over the bottle. These bubbles are what will help you clean your hair. I decided to take the strainer off because I mostly use that for when I use whole herbs in the shampoo. Then I squeeze the liquid that's left in the stockings out. Be careful not to break the stocking. And there is your homemade herbal shampoo. Great for hair fall, dandruff, and fast hair growth. For this shampoo, I would not recommend using it to wash out a deep conditioning oil or a treatment or a mask. From my own experience, if I use this natural shampoo when I have a new mask in my hair, by new I just mean in for a few hours, it won't wash it out because it's not as strong as a real sulfate shampoo but it is an amazing shampoo. So what I do is if I want to oil my hair, I let the oil sit in my hair for at least 24 hours. I know that seems like a long time, 
but by then the oil has soaked into my hair and I've gotten all the benefits from it and then after my hair has been oiled for at least 24 hours since it's been soaked into my hair it will wash out all of that oil very very well I would also recommend leaving this in for about five minutes in your hair I would highly recommend putting this shampoo into your hair on dry hair. If you wet your hair in the shower, the water might dilute it a little bit, but if you put it on dry hair, it will wash your hair very well, I found from my own personal experience. And if this shampoo doesn't work for you the first or second time, tweak the ingredients for your hair, depending if you have dry hair, oily hair or normal hair. If you have scalp issues, maybe try using some more neem. Do not get it into your eyes because it will sting your eyes and it will be very painful. So please do not get this into your eyes, just like any normal shampoo. So those are some tips that I would definitely try if you would like to try this natural shampoo. So those are my tips. I hope that you could enjoy this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this video, please give it up big thumbs up. I always appreciate it when you guys do that for me. Please share this video to a friend or on your Facebook or Twitter. If you haven't, please subscribe to my channel. And if you did, thank you so much for subscribing and supporting my channel. I love you guys and I hope I see you again next Sunday. Bye!